In this topic, we are going to discuss about recruitment and selection in the international scenario. And we are going to talk about the differences between uh, the domestic and international recruitment and selection uh, and what are the key features of international recruitment in a global context. Recruitment and selection, usually they are taken as one activity, but they are quite distinct. So let us take a, uh, take a look at the definition of what is recruitment and what is the selection process. All right, so when we define recruitment, recruitment is a process of searching for and obtaining potential job candidates in sufficient numbers and quantity so that the organization can select the most appropriate people to fill the job requirements. Now, recruitment is the process of enlarging the pool of persons that could be potential selectees. It is a process of enhancing the potential people to access uh, the information uh, which is required to apply for the job. So, uh, recruitment is a process of actually marketing uh, your uh, your job requirements and trying to get as many applicants uh, as possible for uh, that particular job which is uh, which is required to be filled so recruitment is a process of enlarging the pool of persons which are potential applicants and selection is totally the opposite of recruitment. It is narrowing down and selecting the most appropriate ones from, the, from a large pool of potential candidates. So when we uh, define selection, it is the process of gathering information for the purposes of evaluation and deciding who should be employed in a particular job. So recruitment is that you recruit people and ask them to, okay, come and apply to us. But in selection process, what you do is that you gain information about those people and what are their credentials. And then using that information, uh, you try to evaluate that out of, okay, all these recruits, what are the possible people who could fill your job most appropriately? So recruitment and selection, it is not a one process. It, the, both of these processes, these are discrete processes. And both processes need to be effective if the firm is to effectively manage its, its uh, staffing process. So this staffing process has to be managed first on the recruitment level and then on the selection level. And both of them, they have to operate independently and both of them they have to be effective for example if you have a very good recruitment process uh, you uh, are able to call in thousands of candidates for your job but your selection process cannot distinguish and uh, it cannot discriminate between who is an appropriate candidate and who is an in inappropriate candidate then your recruitment process is very good you were able to invite a lot of people but your selection process, if that is not good, if you're not able to test them, if you're not able to evaluate them, then your uh, entire staffing process is going to lose its effectiveness. Similarly, if you have a very good selection process, you have got very sophisticated tests, you have got all the um, facilities um, in, in line for um, selecting the appropriate people, you have an assessment center and you have uh, excellent interviewers who can distinguish between good and uh, average um, uh, potential candidates, but your recruitment process is not good. You're not able to spread the news. You're not able to uh, send, out the in, uh, send out the invitation to people. You're not able to advertise it well. You're not able to inform people that there is a job which is available. So if your recruitment process is not good, it's not effective, then even if you have a very sophisticated selection process, it's not going to be an overall effective process 
of staffing your organization. So both of them, they are discrete processes and must be managed correctly. Now, the key features of difference between domestic and international recruitment uh, and selection, uh, number one is that there could be a predisposition for a certain approach. We had studied in the previous uh, topics different approaches to staffing, and in that we studied there are ethnocentric and geocentric and regiocentric approaches. For example, if there is an ethnocentric approach which uh, favors a particular ethnicity, then obviously if you are going for ethnocentric, uh, ethnocentric approach and you are employing only the parent company uh, nationals, uh, then your recruitment process is going to be limited because you will not be inviting people from uh, other parts of the world who could be potential candidates. So uh, this is one uh, limitation which creates, which makes the recruitment process um, less effective. Then there could be constraints from the host government. For example, if the host government requires you to uh, hire a certain percentage of people from their country, from the host country, then again you are restricted in your recruitment and selection process. Um, Generally, what we see in, uh, as a tradition in multinational organizations is that people, the multinationals, they go for internal recruitment more than, uh, uh, ex uh, than external recruitment. External recruitment is that you uh, invite people, invite applicants from outside. Internal recruitment is that you uh, promote people from inside your organization. You ask applications from people who are uh, who are working in your organization, and you ask them to apply for uh, that particular job. So that is internal recruitment, and external recruitment is asking people from outside the organization to apply for that. So generally, in multinational organizations, there is a tendency and and a general tradition for going for an uh, internal recruitment. Uh, as from the glo uh, Global uh, Relocation Trends Survey, it was found that only 8% of the recruitments were done externally. Why that happens? The reasons for internal recruitments are, they are number one, to reduce the uh, selection risk. Because uh, you know that in the uh, international scenario, there are so many factors that could limit your understanding and limit the amount of information you have about a certain person that you do not want to take the risk of recruiting people from the entire globe and then finding out that, uh, well, we do not have the uh, skills or we do not have the machinery to ev evaluate them and the selection process then may be uh, problematic. And uh, then also to uh, secure present and past human capital investments because you know that in international scenario, there's a lot of additional investment in, uh, uh, in staffing your people. So when you're, when you're sending people to work in foreign countries, you um, train them for cultural awareness, you invest on their transportation in settling down their families, and you know all these things. So you have invested a certain amount of time, money, uh, uh, efforts on people who are already there working in your organization, and therefore you do not want to, uh, you know, um, lose this present and past investment in the human capital that you have already done. So that is why internal recruitments are more preferred in the international scenario, particularly because the cost of uh, uh, recruitment and selection is much higher in the international scenario than in the, uh, the, than the domestic scenario. Because in the domestic scenario, what do you do? In, you you uh, recruit people from a certain city or from a certain uh, country. Uh, the, the cost of doing that is not that high. But when you are at a global level, the costs obviously they are much more higher in that particular scenario. So that is why uh, more internal recruitments are done than external ones. So these are the basic features of international uh, recruitment and selection 
um, uh, and, and how the two processes of recruitment and selection are different from each other.